What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman of The Time Teller here with another unboxing and review. Now today we're going to be taking a look at a pilot's watch from a watchmaker we've seen before, AV8. Uh, let's go ahead and use this lagule to cut that sticker open. But first, let's tell the time, yeah? It is 3.34 p.m. Let's get down to business. Alrighty, so we've seen a few AV8 watches and the ones we've taken a look at, they haven't really been like what I would consider a classic pilot's watch. They've usually been more modern takes, uh, but of course AV8, that's a play on AV8. So we can see where their interests lie as far as, you know, what they like to make. And sure enough, we see some planes. All right, so people like me to spend some time talking about the packaging. So this is kind of just your standard outer cardboard box, very thin paper cardboard. And uh, yeah, we see kind of a retro eight with some circles around that. We see the kind of blueprint on some old school planes. And we have all that media stuff. Uh, you know, you can scan that and register your watch, but we're gonna go ahead and open it. Okie dokie, so we have another kind of leather circle here with that eight. And just like the blue nylon edition, if I remember correctly, that box had some kind of nylon uh, outer material and so does this, although this is more of like a lighter gray. And then we have more of a darker, almost slate color, um, maybe a bit black. Maybe like a lighter black, if that's a thing. Let's go ahead and open this. Okay, so in here, it says AV8. Again, more nylon material. Silica gel pack fell out of that. But we really care about what's in here. So let's get up close, take a look at what is in this packaging. All right, so all I did was handle this packaging and we can see the heart is beating, uh, it's alive, it's alive. And of course we can see, it says automatic in big letters there. So this is indeed an automatic. We have uh, a manual, which I infamously <laughs> never read. Gets me in hot water, but I live on the edge. All right, let's remove the pillow, very snug. What's going on here? There we go. Some of the plastic got hung up on that clasp there. All right, clear this area, and uh, we'll do a little bit of a time lapse removing this plastic, yeah? All right, Gato, start the music in three, two, one. Oh my God, that took forever. And we'll get up close for you freaks out there. Ooh, yeah. All right, so all that's left whew, is to remove this hang tag and then I think we're good. Guys, I know when you get a brand new watch, you get all excited to remove all that plastic. It's fun, it's like unboxing a present, right? Well, the more I do this, the less I like this dang plastic. It's like the bane of my existence. I know, first world problems, right? All right, guys, so here in front of us is the new AV8 Hawker Hunter Avon Automatic. Another bit of very extreme, out there, modern design language from AV8. Uh, again, there's not a whole lot here that lends itself to being like a classic aviation instrument. Uh, there are some things though that kind of cue itself into being a pilot's watch. You know, the big broad handset, we see some inner track markings here, uh, and we see this kind of turbine serration design going here, kind of, almost like a big crown pro pilot. And I know Oris used that design uh, as kind of, you know, a, a planes uh, turbine in its engine. So I think AV8 might be going for that same kind of aesthetic, but 
yeah, the, we, we've come to kind of expect this very out there design language from AV8. So this is nothing that's, you know, too shocking to me. Now, is this something that I would absolutely immediately reach for? Probably not because I don't typically wear watches this loud and out there. Uh, but I know for a fact, a bunch of my viewers, every time I review an AV8 watch, people are like, oh man, I gotta see more from these guys. So. Very happy to have this one here today. Now, this exact variant comes in just under $400 at 395 smackaroos. We're gonna go ahead and measure this and then we'll go over the spec sheet to really see, is this an option under that $400 price point? Let's take a look. All right guys, so a very first on this channel, I have some bad news, the digital calipers have died, I need to replace the batteries, and I just found that out right now, of course, in the middle of filming. So, I'm gonna do some movie magic real quick. Bada bing, bada boom, here are those case dimensions. About a 44 millimeter case diameter, about a 14 millimeter case thickness, some of which being that domed sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating, and you actually get some really nice crystal distortion from it. We're gonna take a look at that in a moment. Um, but, you know, most of that thickness is just the case. It just happens to be a very thick boy. Uh, and about a 54 millimeter lug to lug, so I have a sneaking suspicion this is going to wear very large on the wrist. This is not for someone that has a wrist less than seven and a half inches. I have a feeling, but you know, some people just like to wear oversized watches and that's perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and confirm or deny that uh, by putting it on our wrist. Let's do it. Yeah, yes. This is a big boy. Guys, again, for reference, I have a seven and a half inch wrist and this has pretty much consumed the entirety of my wrist and uh, the lugs are pretty much hanging off both sides. Let's zoom out a little bit. Yeah, so I'm gonna say it right now. If you do have a bit of a slender wrist, this is probably not the watch for you. Again, I do have a seven and a half inch wrist, which is actually a bit above average. So I think for most of you out there, this is going to be a bit large. Now because we put it on the wrist, we can go ahead and talk about the bracelet and the clasp. We see a brushed finish on this stainless steel H-Link bracelet, and we see a pretty standard clasp, nothing special. Uh, you know, you have your micro adjustments, but no diver's extension or, you know, nice slick, uh, like, ratcheting system. Nothing like that. This is a very, very basic clasp. It says AV8. You do have some extra retention there. But yep, yeah, it's about it. Rattles a little bit, but you know, nothing out of the ordinary for a watch in this price range. And the uh, end links, nice and solid, snug up against that case. Looks like the tolerances are pretty true. Yeah, look, no awkward spacing. Bracelet's not rattling up against the watch's head, which is great, it's just, that clasp and the H links are, are rattling a bit. But uh, yeah, this is what I was talking about, that crystal distortion. Some people hate it, I happen to love it. I just think it adds a new dimension to that watch. Another thing I wanna bring up is uh, the dual finishing, right? So we see this kind of turbine serration design on that bezel, uh, the side of it being nicely polished and then the case back also nicely polished. We'll take a look at that a bit closer, but the sides uh, of this case, very, very thick, but nicely brushed. Most of the watch is brushed, except for that bezel, the case back, and this crown. And uh, yeah, again, the real stunner here though, crystal distortion all the way, baby. All right, so as we focus in on this watch's beating heart, we can see it is moving, and there's not a whole lot of decoration from this side of the movement. We do see kind of brushed grains, but it's not super uniform. Um, those could easily be mistaken for like tool marks, but you know, it doesn't look horrible. Uh, but around, again, it's, it's almost like uh, that turbine serrations uh, bordering that open heart. We can see some signage saying 24 joules and that's referencing this watch's NH70 
automatic movement. That is a Seiko Instruments NH70. So this is a 24 joule, 21,600 BPH movement, about a 41 hour power reserve. It does have hacking and hand wind. You're getting hours, minutes, and central seconds. So no real complications outside of that, you know, hacking and hand wind. I know some of those are like make or breaks for some collectors out there. Uh, for me, I think hand wind is much, much more useful than hacking. But for those of you who like to synchronize your watch to an external time source or another watch, uh, yeah, could be definitely useful. Now, as we look towards the six o'clock index, something very interesting is written here. You know, AVA does like to put a lot of text kind of scattered throughout the dials of their watches and they get away with it because, you know, the design language is such that there's just a whole lot going on. There's a lot Lot of places to put writing but they've written something here that I I've actually never seen really on the dial of a watch outside of maybe like I don't know like a Zenith that might have like the 36,000 or maybe some old like Eternomatics or some Seiko high beats uh, but this actually has vibrations per hour like written out uh, and then 21,600 written there. So yeah, I, I don't think I've ever seen vibrations per hour written. Uh, so yeah, the vibration count I have seen on some watches, but, but writing out vibrations per hour, very, very interesting, especially because this is nowhere near a high beat movement. So I'm not sure why they would put that. This is, this is pretty much, you know, outside of like a quartz movement or maybe like, you know, a spring drive, which technically just beats once and just keeps going. Uh, I don't know why they put such a low beat frequency as like a, a marketing uh, point. You know, do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know why they would advertise that on the dial. It's nothing like super duper unique. There's a, t a ton of watches that are 21,600 BPH. So, um, yeah, very interesting. We do see a nicely red coated second hand though, and we do see a very broad hour hand, but let's go ahead and inspect that handset a bit further. Alrighty, so I'm not sure what color loom this will be, but again, it's a pilot's watch and it has a ton of space here for some great loom and I don't want to be disappointed. I'm sick of being disappointed by loom on watches, especially watches that have such big, broad handsets. Now, let's talk about the finishing. So the borders and the edges of this handset actually look pretty decent. Not the best I've ever seen, but there's no real burrs that I can see on playback here. Maybe once it's edited, we'll notice something and we'll circle it. But uh, at the time of filming, all looks very prim and proper. Uh, there are a few different things that I think are very risky with this, this design language, excuse me, and it has to do with all the screw heads on the dial. Um, let's let's take a look and, and I'll kind of tell you what I mean. So I'm gonna move the watch around as I speak, uh, but what I was getting at is the more screw heads you put on a watch, uh, the more chances there are for the screws to be kind of mangled and thrashed because guys, let's face it, I've seen a lot of watches on this channel, some of which being pretty expensive, and I've seen the screw heads just be afterthoughts, right? And it's a huge bummer because anything you can see on the watch, uh, even things you shouldn't be able to see on the watch should be nicely finished, okay? Watchmakers out there, just assume we're going to see it and do your best to make it look nicely finished. And for some reason, screw heads are like the number one thing that watchmakers just do not care about. But the good thing is these are very much decorative uh, design choices here. And it looks like uh, they are, you know, not thrashed. Because again, I don't think that these are like super duper important screws here. Um, whether or not these are actually holding the components on the dial like together, I'm not sure, but if they are, 
you know, they did a good job not thrashing these screws, which is great. One thing I will say is if you're not a fan of indexes and you prefer to read the time utilizing Arabics, this is not the watch for you uh, because although this does have Arabics on the dial on this inner track, uh, they're not super duper visible. And that's because they are utilizing, uh, you know, kind of smaller font in relation to the indexes and also uh, it's kind of a darker, almost like gunmetal tone. Uh, now, the other Arabics here are a nice kind of uh, deep red color, um, but yeah, you know, in certain light, you can see it very nice and then, uh, or nicely I should say, and then in other light, um, we can see that it kind of just blends into that translucent inner dial. Um, now I just noticed something. See this circle here on the movement cutout? There's like some tool marks that I'm noticing. Let me see if I can get a clearer shot. One second. Okay, so if we're looking at this circle in between the, the five and the 10, we can see some tool marks and some burrs and some pits here. I think we can see it in other places as well. Yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about that. I know that some of these grains are kind of just like for aesthetic purposes, but these pits here um, are definite tool marks. I, I don't know how I feel about that. Let me know what you guys think, but see, it's so inconsistent these grains that I almost don't even want to call them grains. It just, they, they look like tool marks the, the closer I get. Again, there's some pitting around the circles there. And again, here, there's some pitting around there. Yeah. So, man, the wonders of the macro lens exposing everything on these watches. Very, very interesting. Yeah, here's some bad tool marks right here by the 55. All right, let's go ahead and look at the case back and see what we can see back there. So we can see there is some finishing, some grains, like this is definitely more consistent of a look back here on the back of the movement. Uh, the rotor is decorated. It kind of has that schematic, that, that blueprint, I should say, uh, that we were looking at kind of on the outer box. Um, and then it says water resistant 50 meters, AV8 automatic. Uh, we see some checkers there. We see 4078 sapphire crystal. Let's see, all stainless steel. So pretty standard, um, some minimal decoration back here. And then of course, you know, you are getting that kind of old school retro bullseye. Uh, in the center of the rotor. So one last thing before we test the loom, uh, you know, I always like taking a look at the crown setting and function. Now this watch doesn't have any uh, complications outside of hacking and hand wind, but let's go ahead and pull the crown out. Again, only one position is the final position. So we can see that uh, the second hand has stopped moving. If we push it in, it will start running again. So very distinct crown setting. Let's go ahead and move that handset around. Very smooth. No complaints here. No weird clicks where there shouldn't be. Uh, yeah, so pretty standard. I know that some people are going to say that they would prefer a date complication on this watch. I think this watch is so busy all around that that would kind of just be one more thing. Uh, so I think that it was good that Aviate did not put a date complication on this watch, but let me know what you think, guys. Leave me that comment. Would you prefer having a date or do you like, I mean, I, I don't know if I could call this a simple design, but do you like it being uh, without a date complication? That's what, that's what I'll say. Let's talk about Loom, baby. It's Loom test time, my favorite part of the episode. All right, guys. Thank you to my viewer who sent me in this UV torch. Give it a little blast there. Ooh, some pretty nice loom on the handset. The indexes are not shining as vibrantly, but that's kind of to be expected. There's not as much surface area there. Um, give it another little blast. So it's, 
not shining for the longest period of time, but what I will say is when it is glowing, uh, it is quite bright, especially on the handset. Yeah, but it's, uh, it's, it's by far not the worst. What I will say is I wish the indexes shined as vibrantly as the handset. So yeah, good job, Aviate. Some decent loom here. Again, that crystal distortion. Okie okay, dokie okay, guys, so now I spend an afternoon with the AV8 Hawker Hunter Avon Automatic. What do I think? Well, this is some definite out there design language, right? And I think AV8 is perfectly comfortable being a bit polarizing. You know, not unlike myself, if I'm honest, but you really have to be in love with this watch's aesthetic. There's like no fence sitting here. It's not like this is something that you can just be, um, I don't know, maybe, you know, love it. No, you either have to absolutely love it or this is just going to not be interesting to you at all. And I get it and I hear it in my comment section and that's what's great about watch collecting. Uh, people don't have to like the same things. It's perfectly fine. And again, one really cool thing is every time I take a look at an aviator, watch there's a whole bunch of people in the comment section that would absolutely love to own it and some people that do own them and some people that absolutely love them because of how out there and edgy and just unique their design language is now it's coming in just under 400 bucks at 395 dollars and again i think that if you're someone that wants an automatic with some decent build quality now again the finish is I wouldn't say the best. I, I would say that there's some definite finishing uh, issues. Not on the case, not so much on the dial, but on the movement, we were able to see some pits and some tool marks. And you know, that's to be expected. Uh, this is a sourced movement, a, a very, very high production rate movement. This is not something that has been assembled meticulously by hand, finished with blued screws. Uh, th th this is just not the case. This is a Seiko instrument sourced movement and they've churned out a bunch of these. Um, but again, I review the watches that I have in front of me. So um, oh, we just gotta take that into consideration. So if you are someone that wants a watch that's not an homage, that's very unique, very modern, a bit oversized, uh, with some decent specs, but again, no complications, then yeah, take a look at this AV8 watch. But what I will say is for me personally, I prefer more of the classic simplified, I would say aviation instruments. Oh yes, I, I absolutely have to throw my snob cap in there. I don't wear pilot's watches, guys. I wear aviation instruments. <laughs> Shout out to you, Bell and Ross. I'm just kidding. But let me know what you guys think, because again, I learn from you just as much as you learn from me. And uh, I love gaining some perspective from the comment section. So what do you think about this new AV8 release? And is this something that you'd be interested in? Or are you just not at all into this edgy design? Uh, leave me that comment and I will see you there. So guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me on this unboxing and review. Special thanks to AV8 for sending me this watch in. We can't do these unboxings and reviews without support from these watchmakers. So AV8, you rock. Thank you for the sponsorship. And again, uh, making sure that we got this piece to review. Special thanks to my viewers because what is a channel without the viewers? So you guys freaking rock. Thank you to my channel members because we literally cannot film every day churning out this content all the time uh, without you guys. Again, if you wanna join the channel and get some extra content and access to that members only Discord, click the join button next to the subscribe button. It's like YouTube's Patreon, it's $4.99 a month and uh, we really do appreciate it. And my editors absolutely love you guys for it as well um, because they got to eat, guys. So uh, yeah, thank you. Check out all the affiliate links in the description below because when you click on those links, you do support the channel. And uh, if you haven't already and you'd like to, then please consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon uh, because I would love to see you in the next episode. All right, guys, stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. And always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. Yeah, yeah, yeah.